on this video we're going to go through the Eclipse IDE specific setup for, for using query beans. Um, so that's enhancing query beans and generating them. Now the first part here is installing the enhancement plugin. Uh, the, the latest version of this enhancement plugin does the enhancement for both entity beans um, and the query beans. So you just install that one plugin and it does both. Uh, and you can just install it via the URL here, um, Eclipse Update, uh, after the website. Now, um, with Query Beans, that's uh, there's eBean provides a Query Bean Generator, which is a Java annotation processor. Now, normally, um, if you're using Maven or IntelliJ, you don't need to do anything else. You just add the Query Bean Generator to, as a Maven dependency, and you're done. But that doesn't work out of the box with Eclipse, so that's that's why this documentation is here. So, uh, in terms of documentation on the website, if you go to documentation setup, you'll see the link here um, to Eclipse IDE apt, and that's going into the, this this page here. So, um, firstly, um, once you've installed the eBean um, plugin for enhancement. Um, the next thing is really we need this M2E apt plugin um, which was produced by Red Hat and what this does is that um, it will automatically find the or set up the annotation processing based on the Maven um, class path effectively, Maven dependencies. So we'll go ahead and go to the uh, Eclipse Marketplace and install that. Um, then if you go to Preferences Maven Annotation Processing, you'll get this page here. You just need to check it. Um, by default, automatically configure JDT apt should be fine. The next thing is on a per project basis, um, you can go into the Java Compile Annotation Processing and you'll need to enable it. Um, and these should all be the defaults that are set up. The next thing to check um, is, and it should be fine by default, is the factory path. So if you go into annotation processing factory path, you'll see um, the list of effectively Maven dependencies. Now by default, these should all be turned on and that's fine. Um, the reason why I've got this slide here is basically that, um, well, images that, uh, it says here plugins and jars that contain annotation processes well, the only thing here that's the annotation processor is the query bean generator, but that's not sufficient. We actually also need um, the artifacts that contain the annotations that the query bean generator reads. So we need the, the persistence API and eBean itself, which has other annotations like dbjson and things like that. So I'm just putting this in here to say um, either select everything or select these three, but um, you can't just select the query bean generator. Okay, so with that, you should be cooking with gas. Um, so let's have a look at our clips and see what that means. So here I've got a, um, I've got a sort of little simple test here. Um, it's inserting some data, a couple of countries, a person with an address, and then we're fetching it using a query bean. So um, we'll just sort of run that. We'll get our query with some predicates on the end here saying, you know, country code equals NZ and uh, date of birth is null or date of birth yesterday. So that's our, our query that's that's here. Now, to back up the truck a little bit, if we go to our POM, we'll see um, this dependency, which is the query being generator. Um, and typically, you put it as provided scope. It doesn't need to be part of the produced artifact, but just putting it in the class path means that Maven, for example, picks it up. Um, and now with this um, with the setup, if I go into uh, do, 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 build path, compiler, annotation processor, it's all enabled, and we've got a factory path. Here it is, it's got my query being generated. So that's as it was the documentation. Um, with that, what happens is that if I have an entity bean, um, so I've got person and I've got country and address, I've now in my got a, a, pa um, a 
package or a directory called generated sources annotations which is under target and under here I've got some query beans and the query beans um, have the same set of properties as the entity beans so ID version first name last name database etc so these query beans here are generated via the Java annotation process now we've got the eBean plugin installed and so what that means is that if I go um, and uh, look at something here actually let's just do a clean project clean what that means is that if I go to the error log um, so if you go you know window show view error log you'll see these info messages down here which are basically saying that the enhancements occurring um, so this is an enhancement of a query bean enhancement of an entity bean um, etc so that confirms that the enhancements running and the uh, query beans have been generated and we can just run them and it works okay so just a quick on why we want query beans um, it's kind of a couple of things one is they provide autocomplete so on a query bean I can um, look at the properties so I've got first name so first name is a, a sort of a string property so it has things like contains and starts with for example so first name starts with that for example so you get sort of an autocomplete and for things that are relationships so for example address is actually an object that has for example city and country and street and I can, can carry on in depth and say well country code which is a string uh, is equal to NZ for example so the the, the thing that um, query beans are bringing to the table are type safe uh, well, auto complete in terms of the query and um, type safe in terms of the parameters so this is knows that the codes are string so equal to here is taking a string I can't put you know 42 or something say so like that um, the let's just run it so we'll we'll have a uh, slightly different query here now uh, you know, lower first name like country code equals and da -da 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 -da. so that's all good now the the other thing that query bring query beans bring is you know uh, compile time checking so if we go to our person bean and we change our property just give it a different name uh, dear beat me date of birth factor that so the beans changed the getters and setters have changed but um, now we actually have a, a problem because our, our DOB our query um, is not liking this DOB property because it, it doesn't lo no longer exist on the query bean if we look on the query bean now um, we see that the property is now called date of birth so what happened was that the annotation processor um, picked up that change regenerated the query bean um, as part of the compile so to actually uh, need to sort of change that to make this query compile and now we can run it so if we, if we run um, our query will now we have now a different if you like column being used in the query uh, now there's a couple of other things I want to quickly show so one is that um, effective POM doesn't work properly uh, in the sense that um, from a maven perspective we've added the query being generator but the other thing that um, we typically do is we use maven tiles well that's my preferred approach is to use a maven tile to bring in the ebean enhancement so this tile here forgetting the java compile but but this ebean enhancement tile brings in three things it brings in um, ebean enhancement uh, query bean enhancement and it also brings in a code generator so if 
I look at effective POM, I don't see um, those as plugins. So if I go down here into the plugins, um, basically I see my tile, but I don't see those other things. So to explain that, program in that help effective POM, let's do it on the command line. Then um, if I go in and play in the effects, uh, so here's our tile, plugin tile manage heading enhancement but up above here is actually the plugins that the tile translates to so um, first one here we've got is the the query beam maven plugin and this has got two execution sections one here and one here and so this one is doing for main beams beams in the uh, process classes and this one's the test classes so this is enhancing stuff in source main and source test. And down here we've got the eBean uh, Maven plugin. So this is doing entity bean enhancement and tra at transactional enhancement. And this is for main classes in main, source main, if you like. And there's actually also, it's bringing in this code gen thing. So I see these when we do command line help effective POM, but we don't see that when we're looking at Eclipse effective POM. Uh, the other thing I was going to do was quickly show you that, um, so here we've got our person test and we've got a query bean and we're going new query bean and that's fine, that's okay. But what we also can do is, um, more frequently, is we use finders. So um, one of the things we've got here is a, is, let's go here. Uh, plugin called CodeGen, eBeam CodeGen, and this does a number of things. Um, it gives a help message, but uh, it also init, so it adds properties and, and default logging files and such. Um, and the one we're looking at here is generating finders. Um, and there's two options for that. Generate finders, which does finders and links them to the entity beans, and then there's finders only. So we'll do the generate finders. And this is actually done some co-generation of finder classes, country finder, person finder, and here it's actually linked the finders to our entity bean. So if we go back into our class, and if we just refresh on that, we've now got finder. Oops, I'm a bit funky there. There we go. And uh, so we've got our finders that are generated and they just effectively they have um, a where and uh, text but in a sense you can put your you can locate your finder code here if you wish um, and in person we've got a, a static field here now in terms of static field in terms of testing um, the even mocker uh, project has the ability to um, test by providing a, a test double for finders. So that's sort of built into uh, the eBeam uh, Mocky uh, testing mechanism. But anyway, where we're going is that uh, we can now do this sort of thing. So we can go person find where first name starts with Rob, right? Because where is actually returning us type query bean. So if we ran this, <coughs> we would now get two queries. The first query here is uh, first name like, and then the second query is our second query. So yeah, I think that's it. I'm just going to have a little look, and I think I've covered everything I wanted to. Um, obviously the finders are optional. Um, some people like them, and some people maybe don't. And um, I think that's all we really need to do. So I'm going to leave it at that. Cheers.